Good evening. Tonight we have five creepy wartime ghost stories. With so many fatalities surrounding war over the last several years, it should come at no surprise that there has been so many ghost sightings or tales. However, tonight I intend to share with you five of the most creepy and chilling wartime ghost stories I came across. Remember to like and comment if you enjoyed and please subscribe if you are new. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. Number 1 One former Navy serviceman recounted his chilling experience while he was living aboard a barge in Norfolk in 1999. He and another crew member shared a fondness for World War II history, so his friend gave him a strange book. It was about the Nazis trying to find and use occult artifacts to help them win the war. He writes, for those not overly religious, the Spear of Destiny was the spear used by the Roman soldier Longinus to pierce the side of Christ during the crucifixion. The myth went that anyone that possessed Longinus' spear would hold godlike powers. The Nazis were crazy enough to believe in that stuff. One night, he was reading the book before going to bed. It was a chapter about Rhein's Führer Heinrich Himmler who led an archaeology team for the SS during the war. After that, he put the book under his pillow and fell asleep. Later that night, he awoke to the sound of slow, heavy footsteps walking through the bunks in the dark. Once the footsteps passed him, he recounted, All of a sudden, the curtains to my rack began to blow in towards me, and I can't even describe the cold that accompanied it. It was as if freezing wind was howling in upon me, and I could feel my jaw lock tight, my teeth instantly becoming a solid block of ice that froze and fused together. I grew up in Michigan and had never known such a cold in all my life. I tried to cry out as the cold pierced me deeply to the core, like ten million frozen needles stabbing me all at once. It was truly indescribable. He heard the footsteps pass by him again, and the door to the sleeping compartment open and close. Everything returned to normal. He gave the book back to his friend the next day and told him what happened. The friend laughed it off, but a few weeks later, he experienced the exact same thing. So what does this service member think was responsible for his eerie encounter? He writes, had it been the conniving farmer chicken farmer Heinrich Himmler, head of the dreaded SS, or could it have been someone even more foul and loathsome? The evil spirit of Adolf Hitler himself, exacting a little payback scare on two active duty US servicemen. The grandson of the men that had helped defeat his military machine. We can only guess. Number 2 this story comes from Reddit user Igloo444. Their grandfather was a member of the British Army and was stationed in a remote village in the Swiss Alps during the winter of 1943. The village quickly got snowed in and all the telephone lines were out. The roads were blocked and the whole battalion was just stuck in the Swiss Alps for the entire winter. Most of the villagers only spoke German and most of the troops only spoke English. So when the troops were out at the local bar one night and a man began yelling, Where? Take you, the children, at them, they were pretty confused. They rounded up a translator and took the man back to the base, where he told them that since their arrival, several small objects had gone missing. A tarp, some woods, an axe-like weapon called a halberd, and then the children started disappearing. If it had just been one child, they probably would have written it off as a weird or tragic accident. They were, after all, stuck in the mountains, surrounded by snow and wild animals. But three kids. Yeah, that that's weird. So Igloo444 writes, the captain told the villagers that he would continue to look into the matter, and that he would begin sending some of his men to patrol the streets each night looking for whoever or whatever was the culprit behind all the strange thefts and abductions. 
Later that night, Private Reginald disappeared from the barracks. Disappearing children was one thing, but a grown man. It seemed unlikely that an animal, even a wolf, could have taken down a healthy, full-grown man on its own. Naturally, rumours began to surface that there was some sort of monster living in the mountains that came down at night to feast on the occupants of the village. So they keep doing nightly patrols. One night, the grandfather and a few other soldiers see a person standing outside the windows of a darkened house, peering into it. They shout for the figure to stay put. Instead, it takes off running. They gave chase and eventually it jumped into a hidden cave and began shooting at them. They returned fire and when the shooting stopped, they investigated. They found Reginald in the cave, dead, surrounded by seven half-eaten children. Number 3 In Colmar, France, a young woman experienced something strange in the summer of 1991. Her family had just moved into a new house and she found a hole in the wall of the attic. Through the hole, she could see another room. But as far as she could tell, it had no door. She felt something strange coming from the hole but didn't investigate. Later, she went back with a flashlight and saw something. There was a young man sitting on the floor, his knees against his chest. His arms were crossed on his knees, like he was hugging himself. He turned his head towards them and smiled. We bolted out of the room and went to storage room. We bolted out of the room and went to the storage room. My heart was pounding. I was out of breath. I first thought that it was a real person, but he had no color. It was like a 3D dark shadow, and we never heard any footsteps. My friend refused to admit that we had saw a ghost, and we never talked about it. My grandmother learnt later that our house was a clandestine printing office during World War II. The owners printed slogans against the Germans, but I think that there was something else in that house. I believe that the secret room was used to hide people. Number 4 One father took a trip through France with his family. He wanted to visit Normandy and see a few sights from World War II. His daughter was seven years old at the time, and he says that she had, at that point, never been exposed to any history about World War II and didn't know what either side's uniforms looked like. After they returned home, things got a little odd. He writes, Over the past year, my daughter has often spoke of things or men that she saw looking at her pointing guns at her and following her while we were in the bunkers and around Normandy area. She often described them as crouching down, hiding behind corners, holding guns and looking as if they were very mad. He started asking her questions about what she saw. Here's one conversation he had. Were you scared? Yes, but I knew they weren't trying to hurt me, so I didn't think anything of it but there were a lot of them. Everywhere I looked, they were moving around like army men do, kind of crawling but bent over. When we would walk out of a bunker, I would see one in the grass or behind a tree. Then when I was in the car, I could see them looking at me from behind a fence in a field. Sometimes a lot of them, sometimes only one or two. She also described their uniforms perfectly, camouflage and everything. Number 5 The SS Alchemos was built as an American ship for use in the World War II. It was sold to Norway, which used it for weapon transport during the war. In 1944, a radio operator who worked on the ship was killed by one of the crew who then shot himself. Norway covered up the incident and claimed that she was killed by enemy fire. After the war, the ship was sold to a Greek shipping company. Strange, unexplained accidents kept happening with the ship. In 1963, it crashed into a reef off the coast of Australia. It was towed to Fermentil for repairs, 
but while it was there, the Alchemos caught fire and had to be towed to Hong Kong for more work. It had barely left Fermentil when the tow line snapped and it ran aground. The tow company couldn't get it unsunk. So they left a caretaker on board until something could be done. The caretaker experienced many strange things on board, including feelings of anger, knocking, footsteps and voices. Over the years, a few companies tried to salvage the ship, but each time someone tried, bad things would happen to their crew. Eventually, it was abandoned and began slowly sinking into the water, where it can still be seen today. That does it for our countdown of wartime stories. I would just like to add that I am active now over on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, so if you aren't already, please be sure to drop a follow or a like. Thank you all for your time and I hope you all have a pleasant evening and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.